Hello and welcome to another episode of Metal Effort. My name is Nehemiah and today we're going to be looking at this piece of metal, the Tashi Barucha Baby Machine. This is made by Riot Knives, made in collaboration with Tashi. This is a trade. It was previously used. I think I'm the second owner. It's in pretty good condition there with one exception, which I'll, I'll mention. But otherwise, we're going to assume this is a run-of-the-mill baby machine. Let's get into our size comparison. We've got our Spyderco PM2. We've got our Spyderco Para 3 for comparison's sake. The blade length is 3.25 inches to the shoulder and then three inches cutting edge. So it's a little bit bigger than your Para 3, a little bit smaller than your PM2. Let's get some more size comparisons. Here's your Koenig Arius. Here's your Spyderco Spidey Chef. Here's your Wee Knives Roxy and your Best Tech Malware. So nice little duos of knives that we can compare it with. Now let's get a weigh-in. Looking at just over four ounces. It's all right on this knife. With that out of the way, let's get into our dent, the decent, the excellent, the nitpicks, and the terrible of this piece of metal. First thing I want to talk about is this blade shape. Uh, this particular model is a stoned washed uh, model. You can like barely see the Riot and the Tashi symbol that looks like a fingerprint, but that's actually his little symbol. That It's a little weird that they're so grayed out. I mean, why even put it on there if they're going to get that kind of matted out? Uh, but the actual stone wash itself is pretty good. Uh, it's attractive, I think. It hold, holds its... Uh, finish up pretty well against like scratches and things like that i'm pretty pleased with that the blade shape itself i find to be very practical you have some flats you have some belly you have some tip got this swedge on the top so for piercing you're pretty good off it's just long enough and useful enough that i feel felt like it can take care of most of my edc tasks now the opening aperture goes pretty deep into the blade but it's a pretty high grind still, you know, as far as like where it's starting out way up here. I think they, you know, grinding it down, it ends up being a pretty good slicing tool um, once you get down to the apex. Cutting wise, it, I was pretty pleased. It's not like the thinnest stock ever. Uh, definitely not like in my top three for slicers, but better than average, I would say for, for that. Let's talk about the weight. The four ounces normally wouldn't make it into the decent section for me on a 3.25 inch blade, but here it does. And the, and the simple reason is you're starting with what is kind of like a faux integral knife, and that's going to add a lot of mass to it. Obviously, uh, it's tall. It's not. It's not just uh, you know covering the whole blade, but it's also you know going up. So I think this could have been a lot worse. The milling inside, the scales really help it out. I'll show you some pictures of just what was going on with the milling. Overall, I think it's a, a, a win because it's so well balanced. It feels good in the hand. It's not something that is tremendously you know, heavy in the pocket. It, it's not that perfect ratio of ounces to inches, but still, it's adequate. Speaking of that backspacer, I think they did a pretty good job on the seam. You can definitely see it. It's not like one of those that's really difficult to make out, like on the Rockstead shin that I had. Uh, it was so very faint on the seam that you could hardly tell. This one's a little bit more evident, but still done well. It's not like it's misaligned. You know, if you look at the top here, it's not too bad as far as one, one side, you know, being moved up too far or the other. Same thing with the back. It's pretty clean. There's no, like, gaps in it. Taking the knife apart, you have the two screws, but you also have two locator pins, kind of keeping everything aligned correctly. It definitely felt very solid lockup, and it makes sense why the you know centering is so perfect. These two scales are just really, really pinned down to be aligned properly. So attention to detail there is appreciated. You get most of the benefits of an integral without all the machining costs that they probably would have passed on to the customer. So overall, I'm pretty pleased with that. Next, let's talk about the steel. This is RWL34. Uh, they did a pretty good job in telling you right here, very subtle again, especially with the stone wash edition. It's just kind of, you know, on the underside of the of the blade. This is probably knife maker's favorite steel to work with. 
it's super easy to polish and you know mold uh it's, <laughs> it's good for customers too like it's a very simple finely ground or fine fine grain structure uh in the metallurgy of it so it's very easy to get extremely sharp uh it polishes up really easily however it's not the best on edge retention comparing it to other super seals it's definitely better than any ingot steel uh, so, you know, it's, it's somewhere in the middle of the pack as far as the, the super seals go, but I will say this edge I put on, it's a, a mirror edge. This edge came up really, really well. I normally go up to 4,000 grit. It was already polished at 2,300 grit, one stone before my 4,000. I went ahead and still did the 4,000, but it, it, of all the steels that I've sharpened and most of them have been super steels, this, uh, definitely came up the quickest with D2 right behind it. Uh, very, very easy to sharpen, very uh, aesthetically pleasing kind of polish on it. So, eh, I'll take it. I, you know, if this knife was more expensive, I'd be a little bit more gripey about the steel, but overall, I think it's fine. The anna work is pretty good. The kind of dark matte blue came across pretty, pretty well. You've got little, you know, stone wash on the titanium scales, gives it a little bit of a, like a seabed type of a look in the right light. Very, you know, classy without being too uh, over the top. Uh, the stone washing again is pretty good. I think it doesn't exactly go together. You know, the stone wash here, and then you have the little bedazzling drill holes here. These are so silver, <laughs> just kind of you know nude steel. Obviously, compared to the stone washing, gives it a weird contrast. Like nothing else on the knife is anywhere close to the stone washing color. So it kind of throws you for a loop, but as far as the actual execution of both the anna work and the stone washing, I think they're pretty good, and I'll put it in the decent, so it's good. In the lock bar area, we've got our steel over, tra uh, over travel stop uh, internal. You've got your steel insert. There's not any lock stick, which is good. Uh, we'll get more into the action of it, but the access to the lock bar is pretty good with the chamfering on both sides. Obviously, having such a wide opening right here makes it very easy access to get in and disengage the lock, but you're only getting there because you have such good chamfer lines in the lock bar area. So I just want to kind of point out the well-executed uh, area here. A lot of knives get this, this section of the knife wrong. Uh, so shout it out there as a, as a positive. The knife is a pretty good carry. It At first, I thought it wouldn't be because the, the blade comes out so far from the scale. But it's pretty rounded. You've got the swedge even. That kind of helps guide it in and out of the pocket. You have also a swoop here. So going both directions, going into the pocket and out, it you know naturally will kind of move your pocket out of the way. Uh, the clip is deep carry enough that it you know went pretty deep into my pocket. Just enough on the lanyard hole to grab it or the, the screws kind of give you a way to pull it out. Pretty easy. Uh, this carried, carried better than I expected, I guess. For such a heavy knife for a 3.25 inch, the overall experience I had in the pocket was better once I actually carried it for a few days than I thought it was going to be. So I want to give it props for that. Next thing I want to mention is just the certificate of authenticity. This is hilarious and I love this. So it's a metal card in a sealed plastic wrapper. So... <laughs> If you're selling, hey, look at my new knife. It's the BB machine. And they're like, that's not the name of it. You made that up. And then you pull this out of your wallet and you're like, <clears throat> it says right here. And you know I didn't doctor this metal plate because it's sealed in plastic. There's no way I could have altered this. So, ha. And then they, they cart you off to nerd prison. Uh, but here it is. It gives you all the, uh, the information. It's uh, serial number 11 of 50. And it gives you all the, the information. This knife did just show up on Blade HQ after I got the knife, uh, just randomly through trade. So it's the perfect time to re release the review of it because they are available and you can get your hands on one. Last thing I'll mention in the decent is just the fit and finish. Centering's perfect. Chamfering is pretty good. Um, again, everything is aligned. Just all the little details that go into making a knife, you know, achieve that, that stellar... Uh, consistency that you're looking out of a production line and you know Riot did a, a really good job with this nothing nothing really you know 
screaming at me as far as like a botched job. Unlike the grind lines are all good, uh, chamfers on the opening aperture, this whole area, the clip, everything is just really, really nice. Getting into the knife and taking it apart, the, it was very, I was actually pleasantly surprised with what was going on in there, such as there is a very small detent ball ramp. It doesn't feel like it much, and it's hard to see on the actual, like, outside of the knife, but I'll show you a picture of it. Uh, it's kind of a steep transition, but it's still better than not having a D10 ball ramp at all. And so those level of details, you know, on the design and the execution of the knife are something I want to uh, give praise to. All right, so let's move into the excellent. I've got two things to talk about. First is the ergonomics on the knife. There is this really cool thing that I like that a lot of knives are doing where it gives you kind of two areas. It's like a giant you know, finger choil here, but just for two fingers, uh, really gives you the sense of uh, control on the knife where you want, you know, I always talk about the pinch grip. And just to address this, I know pinch grip is like this in terms of an actual grip of a knife, but I'm talking about your, your thumb and your index of like a normal pinch, like a literal pinch. So having your index finger and your thumb in the pinching, area be closer together my theory is is that gives you a little bit more control on these and then you want this to be more of a palm swell area you know that as you your fingers get smaller you need the knife to either come up this way or this way or both to kind of meet your fingers and fill your hand cave here and so by doing this you're kind of doing both things that i like you're creating this part to fill your hand and this part to give you the, the sense of control of the knife. And so, you know, holding the knife, it just feels very natural to hold the knife. Your thumb kind of gets its own extra large thumb hammock. No jimping. I don't really think it's necessary unless you have so much, you know, control and grip over the knife. I don't think, you know, it's it's coming anywhere. You know, there's a whole shelf right here that's keeping you locked in. So I don't, I don't know if you, you need the jimping as far as like sliding forward or anything like that. I think the ramp is is enough that you're you're gonna be fine uh, to push if you need to, just by virtue of this being ramped up. Totally fine. I don't. I think it was the right call not to put jimping on there, but all that together, it just f looks kind of weird. It you know this kind of falls under the category of like a a spider co. You know, it's just kind of a weird shape. But then once you actually get it in the hand. Uh, it's going to be good. I'm putting the, this in the excellent. You could be totally different. If you have baby baby hands or alien fingers or whatever, you have giant like sausage mitts, this might not be as comfortable for you. I, I get so much extra space on the end of the knife. I would have a hard time imagining that this would actively be bad for someone, but maybe it's not in your excellent. Maybe it would end up being just a, a positive for you, a decent thing. But for me, I still feel strongly enough I'm going to put in the excellent. Last excellent thing is kind of our, our go-to OCD, open, close, disengage. So let's, let's get with the, the open. No flipper tab here. It's Spidey Flick or the Sebenza rollout. And I've got good news and I've got bad news. So the good news is for flicking, this is amazing. The detent is perfect for it. It, it rockets out really strong. It reminds me a lot of probably my favorite flicking knife, which is th this particular PM2, just with its like perfect detent. You get you know really strong deployment on this knife, and this feels like I have my fingers in the exact same spot, and it has the exact same awesome action. So really, really, really pleased that having a, a flicking Spidey Flick open is my favorite way of all the ways to open a knife. And so having that be offered and executing it really well is really all I need. That's good. I, I wouldn't mind having a second way to open the knife. Uh, but if you get one good way done really well, then that's going to pass, you know. Now, normally when you have the hole, you would be able to do a Sebenza open if you needed to. You know, if you're not looking to be all tricky or you got gloves on or something and it's not easy to get your big glove finger into the opening aperture, maybe maybe the Sebenza open is something that you can kind of fall back on. The way that this knife is designed, when you're kind of pushing on the knife here, 
it's a very hard detent and it's up here kind of where it should be and so the the leverage that you're kind of pushing down onto this is you're increasing that detent like substantially to where you can subbenza open it but it feels like you're mistreating the knife almost like you're pushing too hard to actually break it it doesn't feel super good uh, you're just fighting like the the geometry of the of the blade. If you do it from the opposite side, like a left hand subends open, the leverage is working in your favor here, and this is actually much easier to break the detent. Where over here, it's like so hard and awkward. I actually just don't want to do it. So I am primi primarily exclusively flicking the knife open. Good news is that action is so good, I don't care. Next thing is the disengage. We'll talk about. Now, this is not a 10 out of 10. In the actual disengaging part, like this action right here is good. Like I mentioned earlier, plenty of space here. All the chamfering, chamfering is you know perfect. The problem is the, the jump from the detent ball being off the tang of the blade onto, even with that, that detent ball ramp, that detent ball is just so tall. I think it, it's not quite exactly the best experience. You have to go all the way down to here to get the detent ball onto the tang of the blade. So you can see how it kind of wants to pop up right here. And even with that ramp, it's still got a little bit of the bouncy bouncy that the Riot Jack had. Um, so <laughs> it, this is two Riot knives in a row where this is more than average, kind of the pushback of getting the detent ball onto the ramp. At least I think they know that this was a problem. I can't imagine how bad this would have been if they didn't have that very miniature sized detent ball ramp. I don't know if it's a simple solution to just making that ramp a more subtle gradient or just larger. I, I, I don't know what the solution is. You don't want to you know, affect the lock face too much to where you don't have solid lockup. But there's something going on here that Riot hasn't figured out that everybody else has. So... It's good, you know, as far as the actual disengaging of the lock bar. It's just this finger is going to have to push the, the knife up onto the tang of the blade before you're going to get your, your action on the close, which we'll talk about. So let's assume that you go through the awkward, perfect placement. Okay, detent ball is on the tang of the blade. It's one jostle to close it. Action is pretty good. If you open the detent ball or the lock bar open, you know, you, you actually, like, come in contact with the over-travel stop. If you push far enough, the, the actual fall shuttiness of the blade is pretty substantial. Like, it's a very smooth action. And so it's pretty much all the detent ball's fault for making this not just, like, a guillotine shut close. So I, it's there. It's got potential to be, like, amazing on the action if that detent ball could be figured out where you could have strong detent with just without having the detent ball push so hard onto the actual blade. Overall, I like the action and that's why it's in my excellent. Next, let's talk about the nitpicks. First thing I'd like to talk about is this bedazzling. Now, this is totally subjective. You know, I was asking people at work, some people loved it, some people hated it. I'm, I'm in the don't prefer it camp. Not a big deal. You know, the raindrop pattern really drives some people crazy. I'm not one of them. I, I would rather have this just be normal. Um, I, it's fine to have variants in knives. I don't want all knives to look exactly the same. I think the prof profile of the knife itself is already unique enough uh, that you don't need that. Obviously, you have the same basic knife on Mass Drop that has all the crazy hollowing out. It's the same same knife for the most part. This is a little bit nicer fit and finish. You have the faux integral style. Not quite the same. I think this is a better knife overall, but I don't like the bedazzling as much. Next, the owner that had this knife traded it to me. He said he had it for a very short time, and the clip was bent up. It was not actually touching the side of the, the scale. So I got a really good <laughs> deal for it. Uh, you know, the, the knife I traded was worth more in the $250 range, $240 range, where he had just purchased this for about $300. And so this uh, wasn't a problem. I just took it off and bent it back and good to go. But just want to mention in the first place that this clip did bend. I don't know what caused it. He wasn't clear on how it happened. I don't know if it was like crazy, you know, off the wall circumstances, but it did bend. 
and I had to b bend it back. But story is it's perfectly functional. It still has spring to it. I don't think there's any permanent damage done. Doesn't look any di different. I mean, maybe you could tell that it was bent at one point, but I can't. Uh, it looks pretty normal to me. So just in full disclosure, I let you know what was going on and how it affected it. I'm not too concerned about it. This lanyard hole, now, you know I don't like lanyard holes. I prefer it not be here. That's not really what I'm gonna mention here. Obviously, I wouldn't wouldn't want it there. It's it's not in the way, you know, it's it's deep enough carry that I'm not really upset by the lanyard hole. But I will mention, as far as lanyard holes go, I feel like this is extra small. Like I don't know if you are a lanyard person, if this would actually be big enough for you, depending on the kind of lanyard you're you're doing. So I'll point that out, because that's actually relevant to people I do like lanyard holes and doesn't matter to me at all, but something I'd point out. In the terrible section, I've got nothing, so let's move into the conclusion. The conclusion is, I like this knife way better than I thought I was going to. The action on this is really good. It's really fun to fidget with. It's a really good shape and size. It's right in that medium size that I like, the 3.25 inch size. Weight-wise is good. It's, it's better than you know a really big knife not quite as, as light or portable as some of the better EDC options out there, but right in the middle to where I, I feel like people that normally have big knives could get this, Normal people that normally have small knives could get this, and both would be pretty pleased with its size and functionality. I think it's very practical. Now, the one thing I haven't talked about is price, and I don't really know where to put it. <laughs> it's kind of expensive, The the normal, you know, just baby machine on like standard on blade hq type areas is about 288 dollars ish which is kind of high for steel like rw34 rwl34 rather it, that's a little bit above normal ask, asking price but it, if you're gonna compare it to like other like integral knives which this is not an integral knife but I think for all intents and purposes, it's very much like one, only easier to take apart and maintain than an actual integral. So I kind of think this is like the best of both worlds. You get the cleanness of an integral uh, with the you know practicality of being able to take it apart and do normal like maintenance. I think it's good. The action is really, 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 I think what's winning me over and the blade shape and the ergonomics are probably my three most important aspects of a knife and I'm pretty pleased with all three of those things. So to me, I feel like the 288 isn't necessarily terrible or in the nitpick, it's right in the neutral. I did get this in a fairly like lopsided trade. So I fully acknowledge that that could be a part of my bias is just, I feel like I got a deal on this and that could be coloring how I'm perceiving the cost. But I also think just kind of trying to step outside of this and just ju judging the knife on its actual merits, I think this is doing just as well, if not better, than a lot of knives at the same price category. With the one exception of RW RWL34 being in that kind of like, eh, I don't know. It's it's this weird thing where it's like, it's kind of lower on like the standard uh, like industry kind of direction for that price range you should be at, you know, M390 type steels. But then once you get back into the customs, then it kind of circles back around to RWL34 and CPM154. They just, they're so easy to work with, with the custom makers and polish and make look really nice. So it's, it's one of those weird steels where it kind of hangs out, they're really expensive, and then kind of on the slightly budget end of it in terms of like pr production knives. And this is kind of where it normally doesn't hang out, which is in the $300 range for a production knife. So I, we're just not used to seeing it here, but I, I think it's fine. Uh, but I could also, you know, acknowledge that any argument for it being a good price or a bad price being valid. It's right in no man's land. I like it. I can recommend it. I, I don't know what hole it's really filling you know, what, what role it is. Uh, this is definitely a knife I feel like if you want a really nice knife and you're not sure what to get, but you're not a collector, you just want one knife and you like the profile of this, I think it's an easy kind of EDC option that's just going to be good in most situations, you know. It's not the greatest cut, cutter on planet Earth, but it's better than, say, a 940 in slicing, you know. So it, it's kind of a 
chameleon of sorts, I think it can fit a lot of rules without being a standout in any particular category. That's my review on the baby machine. I hope this was helpful to you. I'll catch you in the next video. Adios. Thank you.